Kirsten Rear, and today I am going to be talking about EA's scrapped Dead Space 3. EA doesn't seem to have a good track record when it comes to threequels. At the start of the decade, it seemed like every third entry of a video game was crashing and burning, and nothing stings more than Visceral Games' Dead Space 3. While not garnering the same fan backlash as Mass Effect 3, EA's last hurrah in the innovative survival horror franchise came out to lukewarm reviews and weak sales. With many critics and fans agreeing that it had strayed too far from what made the original two installments so electrifying. It wasn't bad, but something somewhere had gone wrong and the series had lost its identity. However, Dead Space 3 turned out not to be the exact game that the creators initially intended to create, thanks to a candid and an incredibly awesome interview with the creator of the project. However, what Dead Space 3 ended up being wasn't exactly what the creators initially intended to create. We found this out thanks to an awesome Eurogamer interview with the creative director of the project. With a bunch of tidbits also being revealed since launch, it seems that this troublesome threequel is down to the classic developers wanting to do something creative and the publishers wanting to make as much money as possible. Making Dead Space scary again. The Dead Space 3 that we got while being mechanically satisfying and with a few good ideas was clearly chasing a more mainstream audience. The moody space stations had been swapped out for snowy expanses, there were more enemies and ammo was plentiful. And of course players could team up with a buddy with some Mountain Dew to blast some once terrifying monsters away together. The developer's original vision however was much more in line with the horror pioneered in the first game. In the interview with Eurogamer it was revealed that the second game was supposed to be all out action but the third game was supposed to go back to the horror roots and delve deeper into Isaac Clarke's psyche. That's because going through everything that he did and the mental manipulation of the alien markers linked to the necro morphs, our favourite engineer is no longer the man that he used to be. This title would have been about diving into the element of this character, with Wallet mentioning that dementia would have been a huge theme, showing that Isaac's psychological issues would manifest in the game. This approach would have been an awesome way to maintain the scares in this third instalment. The franchise's signature enemies, the Necromorphs, while once terrifying, had now become very familiar. After all, we had by this point mowed hundreds of them down. And as Resident Evil zombies can attest to, familiarity breeds contempt. And by going down a more psychological route, the developers were trying to make Isaac's personal demons as scary as the real ones that he was going to face. As well as being an opportunity to terrify players, it would have been a perfect continuation of Isaac's story arc. As mentioned, hallucinations and his fractured psyche played a major role in the first two games. With the haunting manifestations of his dead girlfriend Nicole providing some of the most most memorable scares in the game series. So not only would doubling down on this element provide a new avenue for scares, but it would also tie very neatly into the previous installments. Solving the co-op problem. In their desire to open up the game to a wider market, EA had to mandate the fact that the sequel would need to have a multiplayer element. Reports vary on how the team reacted to this. Some people say that they came to this conclusion early on, while some people say that they decided to come to this at the later stages. No matter when Visceral came to this conclusion, they had a genius way to involve co-op and still make a terrifying game. Now the closest analogue for this shift at the time was of course the Resident Evil franchise. The fifth and sixth entries in the series included co-op and came under heavy fire and scrutiny. In fact it's the one feature that many people say is emblematic of Capcom's desire to appeal to a wider audience by sacrificing its horror roots. Even worse, the secondary characters in these titles never felt more than ciphers for a player too. Sheva was wholly underutilised in Resident Evil 5 and the Resident Evil 6's secondary character characters fared even worse. I bet you can't even remember any of their names. To circumvent these issues and prove to players that co-op wouldn't sacrifice what they loved about Dead Space, Visceral decided to opt for a more asymmetrical approach. Wanna explained that the two characters would start on level footing, but as the story progressed, they would experience the same set pieces in different ways. Framed as hallucinations, one person might turn down a hallway and see a bloodbath, while the other might turn down the same hallway and see absolutely nothing of noteworthy. The Shadow Isaac Twist. The idea of this was to get the players to start question what was real and what wasn't, and to ask why they were experiencing different things. To circumvent the power of having another human by your side, these discrepancies would start to sow doubt and distrust into your partnerships, making for a more unique horror experience. Just because one player is safe doesn't mean you both will be. Even better, this would have capped off with a payoff directly linked to the story of Isaac's psyche. A late game twist would reveal that the second player wasn't just another character joining Isaac on his adventures, he was in fact a manifestation of his own 
own mind, dubbed Shadow Isaac by Wanat in a Eurogamer interview. This would have been a huge reveal, and it's unclear how the game would have progressed after this. Whether the cooperative relationship would have been inverted or not, this would have been such a dead space move to prove that co-op can be done so well in this subgenre. Of course, this was Visceral's plan, and they hadn't yet factored in EA. Wanat said that they got cold feet over the dementia idea and scrapped it. Though the devs wanted to return to this series' horror roots, EA wanted anything but. In fact, there's an argument to be made that Dead Space as a series represents everything that the publishers didn't want from its games. Single player games are dead. For one, the franchise was kind of born during a time where EA was having a little bit of a breakdown. After being named the worst company in America and being criticized by fans saying that they were relying on the same old tired franchises, executives decided to greenlit a bunch of new IPs to prove that they still had passion for creativity. This boom resulted in some great games, including Mirror's Edge, Skate, and Dead Space, the latter being the most successful. However, it is telling that all three franchises are currently on ice. Even from the off, it was clear that EA wanted wanted to morph Dead Space into something that it wasn't. As mentioned earlier, the second game seemed to edge more towards action than the slow pace of the original, and it featured a huge mandate from the company multiplayer. Though they're not that shy about it now, even a decade ago EA were making it clear that they thought that single player games were dead. Their worst nightmare was something like Dead Space that could be played solo, finished in a weekend and then traded in. In a 2010 interview with Develop, then EA Games label president Frank Jabot said that single player games just weren't a viable model, saying that I think that that model is finished. Online is where the innovation and action is at. This directly impacted Dead Space 2 which had to crowbar in a multiplayer mode just to tick a box. Even one agrees that nobody came to the game for this. It wasn't treated as a vital component by either the devs or the players. Consequently, wanting to integrate the multiplayer into Dead Space 3, they came up with the asymmetrical approach. This felt a more natural choice for a co-op idea, as it wasn't totally forced upon them. They had tried and failed to implement it in the first game, with the executive producer on that game saying, the experiment failed because it was way too in development and it just didn't make sense with the story. Horror games don't sell. The issue is though that EA didn't want multiplayer just this time around, they wanted multiplayer that could sell. It's an infamous part of gaming history that the company basically set up the third game to fail, saying that they needed to sell a minimum of 5 million copies to make it worthwhile. To put that number into context, the far more mainstream Mass Effect 2 sold 4 million copies for EA, with the highest selling being Resident Evil 5 selling 7 million copies, and that took two decades of audience building. To hit that target, they needed to appeal to as many people as possible, so they couldn't market the original idea for Dead Space 3. After all, the entire appeal of co-op was the fact that you didn't know what was real and what wasn't, and the fact that there was a late game twist. Its biggest draw was something that would just be butchered if it was revealed in trailers. In the end, according to one ad, EA went for something far more conventional. This asymmetric framing was all but ripped out, with Shadow Isaac being replaced by a generic soldier called Carver. It's unclear how late into development this actually happened, but given the fact that this second character features very little in the actual plot lines and is often missing during pivotal moments, it seems that this maybe happened quite late into development. Likewise, other systems were retrofitted to suit EA's needs, like the fact that they completely changed the crafting system so that it had microtransactions for you to buy raw materials. Materials. Apparently, this was a fact that lamented with Visceral itself. In 2017, an ex Visceral level designer said in an interview Horror games are in general expensive to make and hard to sell, basically backing up everything that EA said. However, the 4 million copies that Dead Space 2 sold is nothing to sniff at, so the justification shouldn't be that horror games don't sell, but just that horror games don't sell as much. Visceral Games Demise Either way, these decisions wouldn't just kill Dead Space 3, but Visceral Games as a whole. After this, the writing was on the wall. EA weren't interested in any of the games that this company had to make or were good at making. After producing Battlefield Hardline, the team was put on a Star Wars project. Renewed with Uncharted's Amy Hennig joining the company as creative director. Sadly, their philosophies continued to rub shoulders with EA, and the publisher shut down the project and the studio. According to a thorough Kotaku post-mortem, the game wasn't a multiplayer experience or a live service, but one that was more closer to the single-player stylings of Dead Space. The demise of the studio stings even more, as there were good plans for Dead Space 4 that was revealed in Eurogamer 2018. 
This can follow up would follow humanity on the verge of extinction, having to scavenge much needed supplies from ruined space stations and overrun ships. Building on the well received sequences on the shipped versions of the third title. Dead Space was a great franchise, but clearly one that was made by the wrong publisher. The original creator has argued that single player titles like it are probably more viable in the current climate, but the reality is that it was just not a game that was meant for EA. Thanks to these reports, though, we can at least imagine what it could have been oh it could have been so good i don't know why ea does this to us but anyway i digress if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already click that subscribe button but for now i have been kirsten Rear. you can find me on instagram and twitter at kirsten Rear with two a's but for now i will have to see you in the next video bye